The Beltway is buzzing about a juicy new novel by Nicole Wallace. You've seen her here before. She was White House Communications Director for George W. Bush, a senior advisor to John McCain and Sarah Palin, and her novel definitely draws on that experience. It's called 18 Acres, what insiders call the White House complex, and it revolves around the three most powerful women in Washington, the first female president, her chief of staff, and the White House correspondent who throw them, throws them for a loop. And Nicole Wallace, great to have you here again this morning. And, and I, I love this book. I read it straight <laughs> through. And, and that makes sense because I'm a junkie. I worked in the White House and you get all the little details right. But it's also much more than that. It's kind of like a, a, a fantasy thriller for women. It was a fantasy. You know, after uh, two presidential campaigns, one where we won and one where we, we uh, lost um, and five and a half years in the White House, I was ready for a little fantasy myself. And so I created this fictional world and lived out some of my fantasies about a woman finally becoming president. She's a moderate Republican from Northern California. And, um, and you know, I'm just as struck by the fact that there's never been a woman White House chief of staff. So I, I you know, and, and your, your character, Melanie, is, is a very, very experienced chief of staff. This is actually the second president she's working for. How do you explain that there hasn't been a woman chief of staff? You know, this is something you and I have talked about this. Um, you know, I, this is almost more inexplicable to me because women at a staff level are quite powerful. And George W. Bush, the, the West Wing was ruled by women. There was Karen Hughes, there was Condi Rice, there was Mary Madeline. So, and I'm sure Obama has strong, smart women around him too, but it's pretty surprising. You know, White House chief of staff really runs the White House runs the administration. They keep the they do things people don't know about. They keep the cabinet in line. They they take care of the president's personal needs. They make sure his family is happy and thriving in the White House. And that there's never been a woman in that job is just as surprising to me as the fact that we've never had a woman president. Yet the woman president, most powerful woman in the world, has to deal with the, I guess, the indignity of a husband <laughs> fooling around. Yes, in my story, um, I, I was always struck, and especially after 2008, I was struck by some of the special indignities that Hillary Clinton and Sarah Palin suffered. It seemed like they went through all the normal rigors that any candidate goes through, scrutiny for their positions and their statements, and every interview they do ends up on YouTube. But for women, when Ob Obama said to Hillary Clinton, Hillary, you're likable enough, it really Something in my brain hurt clicked, and it hurt him, and it hurt him with women, because I think that was a a, a question about likability that, that was uniquely applied to Hillary Clinton. And then when it came to Sarah Palin, there were all sorts of things, but I was especially struck by the fascination with the cost of her wardrobe. And I just kept wondering, if she were a man, and they were that money was spent on black suits or dark blue suits, would anybody care? Would it be a story on television? So I thought in 08 there were special indignities right. suffered by women on the campaign trail, and I wanted to have some fun with that. Well, Al Gore that. had some trouble for his earth tones in 2000, but I take it. his weight gain, so, but weight it was gain. extreme. You know, a woman only has to, you know, appear puffy, and it's all over the Internet. You talked about Sarah Palin and her clothes, and there have been a lot of reports from the campaign saying that you and she had run-ins over that. She blamed you for the clothes. Uh, you said it, 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 it just wasn't true. And I think a lot of people are going to be going through 18 acres uh, wondering who's who in, in, <laughs> in all of this. And you do have a vice presidential candidate, Tara Myers, who is very brassy, um, <laughs> has quite a wardrobe. And you write about her. Melanie disliked everything about Tara. She was loud, tacky, and rude. Sarah well, look, I, I think I think there'll be a conversation between, you, you know, people that have read it have already started sending emails. And I, I love I think people will experience this book on many different levels. I think people that are familiar with my political experiences may project onto this some um, some of what I've lived through. But, you know, this was a book where I wanted to make everything about what the characters experienced real. And the fact that I'd experienced some highs and lows, some triumphs and some humiliations certainly made the writing of 18 Acres easier. And it certainly made it very realistic. It was it was a fantastic read. Nicole Thank Wallace, you. congratulations. Thanks so much. The book is called 18 Acres. You can read an excerpt at abcnews.com slash GMA.